What's going on, everyone? My name is Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, where we talk about business and technology. Today, we're going to be talking about the automotive industry. We're going to be talking about some of the stories that are shaping the world. And trust me, it's not what most people think. So let me be honest with you guys. If you're new to the channel, I'm bullish on Neo. I'm invested. I got skin in the game. But today is not about pumping our own bags, and it never is. We're being objective about what's really going on we're analyzing data we're looking at market trends and we're really just trying to cut through the noise and expose what's truly going on let me start with something that really caught my mind today neo's uh sub brand onvo uh just released their l90 not too long ago literally three four days ago and they're already making some major waves they already cracked top three in china's um large suv segment but Here's where it gets interesting. In just 72 hours after deliveries began on August 1st, they've already moved 1,976 units. Now that might not sound massive, but context is everything. This put them in the third weekly insurance registrations right behind Huawei's IDO M8 with 5,307 units and the IDO M9 with 2,304 units. But here's the kicker. Envo's total insurance registrations hit 3,700 units that week, up 145% from the previous week's 1,510. William Lee said that their Hefe factory is running at full capacity, working overtime. They pre-built inventory specifically for this launch. So this isn't accidental, it's strategic execution. Now, while we're celebrating Neo wins, let me talk about the elephant in the room, Lee Auto. Remember when they used to flex their weekly insurance ratings? I remember that time, I was recording during that time. Well, they hit a 25 week low with just 5,480 registrations down 26% from the previous week. Their flagship L9, just 727 units, and the L8, 474 units. Here's what's fascinating. Lee Auto launched their first peer electric vehicle, the Lee um, I8, on July 9th. Then they had to relaunch it with reduced variance and lower prices due to poor reception. So this tells us something crucial about market dynamics right now. The shift is real. For years, Lee Auto dominated these rankings while people complained about Neo having modest sales. Now the tables are turning and it's not just about one good week. It's about execution, product market fit, and understanding what consumers actually want. Now let's zoom out because what's happening with individual companies is part of a much larger story. Chinese automakers are setting these massive targets, 3 million, 5 million vehicles annually, and most of them are gonna miss, sadly. On July 31st, FAW Group announced 5 million vehicles by 2030. Shangan Automotive, a day before, said the same thing. Earlier this year, Geely targeted 5 million vehicles by 2027, and BYD wants to hit it by 2025. So let's do the math here. If these four companies alone hit their targets, that's 20 million vehicles. That's more than half of China's domestic market. But here's where everyone is missing. This isn't just about ambition. It's about a fundamental misunderstanding of market dynamics. Look at the 2025 targets set five years ago. Toyota wanted 500,000 pure electric vehicles annually. They managed about 82,000 in the first half of this year. Volkswagen planned 1.5 million electric vehicles this year. They're at 465,000 through six months. These aren't small misses. These are strategic miscalculations. In China, it's even worse. FAW targeted 6 million vehicles by 2025. They've revised down to 3.45 million. SAIC wants to be a top five global automaker. They sold 2.05 million in the first half. GAC Group went from 3.5 million down to 2.3 million, and they achieved just 32.8% of their six month target. Even if Great Wall Motors went from 4 million vehicles with 80% new energy to 1.9 million total, they still only hit 65% of that reduced target. But while Chinese OEMs are struggling with realistic target setting, Tesla is quietly revolutionizing the ride hailing industry, and most people are missing it. Here's a real world test from Austin, Texas. Someone took 15 Tesla RoboTaxi rides and compared them to Uber. Tesla won every single time and we're not just talking about small margins. For a nine mile trip, 
Uber charged $30.38. Tesla charged $9.92. That's 67% cheaper. For a short trip under one mile, Uber wanted $12.36. Tesla charged $1.97. That's 84% cheaper. Now your first thought might be Tesla is burning cash on subsidies but that's completely wrong. This isn't a price war, it's a cost structure revolution. Tesla's pricing model is fascinating. They started at $4.20 per ride, regardless of the distance, then moved to dynamic pricing based on mileage, time, and demand. Their average cost per mile runs from $1 to $1.30, while Uber, they're sitting at $1.50 to two dollars and that's before surge pricing and tips of course but here's a real insight tesla's cost per mile could drop 30 to 40 cents um by 30 to 40 cents once the tesla cyber cab which is supposed to come in at twenty five thousand dollars us dollars arrives think about the math eighty thousand um miles driven annually at one dollar per mile generates eight thousand dollars minus thirty two thousand dollars at 40 cents per mile that's forty eight thousand dollars of profit per vehicle scale that to a hundred thousand vehicles and we're talking about 4.8 billion dollars in uh service transportation profit musk says tesla will cover half the u.s population by year end that's 167 million people the top 15 u.s metros only total 100 million people combined so what does this all mean when we connect the dots first the chinese ev market is consolidating faster than anyone anticipated companies setting unrealistic targets aren't just being optimistic they're misreading fundamental market shifts the winners will be companies like neo with their sub brand Envo because they understand market segmentation, pre-build strategy, and they execute wisely on delivery. Second, the autonomous vehicle revolution isn't coming. It's here and it's economic disruption disguises technical advancement. Tesla isn't just building cars, they're building a vertically integrated transportation utility that makes traditional ride hailing obsolete. Third, for companies like Neo, this creates both opportunity and urgency. There's opportunity in markets where Tesla doesn't operate yet from a taxi perspective, China and Europe. Their urgency is to develop their own autonomous capabilities before Tesla arrives. So look, I'm bullish on NEO, but obviously not because I'm ignoring reality. I'm bullish because they're showing signs of strategic thinking while the competitors stumble. The Envo L90 launch wasn't about moving units, it was about proving that they can compete in a crowded market while also setting some strong expectations or executing on those expectations, I should say. Companies that survive the next five years, they're not going to be the ones just talking about things. They're not going to be the ones with just the who are just setting the biggest target. They'll be the ones with the clearest understanding of what's actually possible and the execution capabilities to deliver. So here's my takeaway. Delivery number is great, but don't get caught up in the delivery number game, the weekly, the monthly, the whatever. That's surface level analysis. Looks at Look at execution capability, market positioning, and technological differentiation. So anyways, guys, the autonomous revolution is reshaping everything. Wanted to throw that in there. But anyways, guys, this is it for today's episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. I hope that this episode was useful for you guys, helpful. Uh, informative at the very least entertaining if it was any of those things make sure you hit that subscribe button let's get this subscriber count up 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 make sure you leave a comment down below click the like button notification bell icon share the video let's get this to a broader audience all your engagement truly does go a long way in helping out this channel and helping a company which we a lot of us watching this channel love a lot so that's going to be it for today's episode don't know if i'll have time for an episode tomorrow i'm going to be on the go traveling i have business to handle but thank you guys for tuning in and uh we'll see you in the next installment this is ob signing off goodbye